turns out walking with a camera outside, not something that comes easily to me. I'm in awe of everyone else who does it. How are you doing this? Um, I'm walking downstairs. So today started off with therapy, which usually I feel great afterwards, but today's one was tough. But today is a good day because my favorite person in the world is coming to visit me and I'm just on my way to go meet her from the train station now and I could not be more excited. She's here. If you can't tell, it's my sister. We're twins. My twin sister, yeah. Did you miss me? So much. Okay, good. <laughs> So we went to my favorite coffee place in the West End, Paper Cup, and now we're just going for a nice walk. And what are we doing tonight, Beth? We're gonna see our favorite band play for the fourth time. Who's our favorite band? Big Thief. Yes! <laughs> the books that we're reading just now. So, what are you reading just now, Beth? I am reading Winter in Sokcho. I literally started it this morning, so I'm only a couple of pages in, but I've heard really good things that it's a good kind of quick read, but not quick in the sense that it doesn't really have much substance to it, just quick in the yeah. sense that it really like draws you in and the characters' like relationship is really interesting. So I'm looking forward to it and I love the cover as well, which always helps. Yeah, I read this uh, last year. It's my boyfriend's copy that you borrowed. So he read it and I read it immediately after him and I read it maybe in like a day, I think. It was really, really quick and yeah, enjoyable. Not one of my favourite reads of last year, but it was, it was good. Tell me one thing that you really liked about it and one thing that you didn't really enjoy about it. Oh, she's interviewing me. So what I really liked about it was where it's set, well, I mean, it's called Winter in Sokcho, so it's really cold. And when I was reading it, the cold was like coming off of the page. Like you okay. can feel it in your bones, how like achingly cold it is. So 
it was really easy to kind of visualize where it was set and what was happening and how that wintry cold mood kind of like permeates the relationships and the characters narratives so that's yeah, like probably that. what i like the most about it um what i disliked was the male character <laughs> Sean Connor. yeah i just just didn't like him that much i think it would would have been more interesting if she wasn't having to have the story in relation to a male character like i really like the protagonist and i just wanted to kind of learn more about her and maybe her relationship with her mum and the people at the hotel that she works at rather than i live on a really busy road rather than learning more about her like through this guy i guess but i mean it was still good i'd still read it girl i feel like that point is quite interesting because a lot of the time in novels when there's like a woman main character a lot of the time her plot is kind of contingent on the men in her life and it's just it's a little frustrating yeah you know? yeah frustrating. it can be that yeah okay so that's what you're reading just now mm -hmm. um what i'm reading just now is fake accounts by lauren euler which i have been wanting yeah. to read for so <laughs> long so i read the excerpt that was published on the atlantic when it came out i think it was at the start of last year and immediately I was like, I need more. This is so good. And then it came out a while later in the UK, in hardback first, obviously. But this is the cover. <laughs> and so I, this sounds so superficial, but I just didn't want to pick it up because I hated the cover so much. I, see, I remember you saying that. I don't have an issue with it at all. I quite like it. Really? Yeah. Well, what do you like about it? I don't know. Well, there's like... Have you seen the US cover? Yeah, it has like the green on it, right? Yeah, the US cover is gorgeous. I mean, yeah, it's beautiful, but also like, I feel, I do still quite like this. No, no? It, like, I just like it so much that it genuinely put me off for like months. I mean, it, it's a fair point though, because like you have one job to do with a book cover, draw yeah. your... Like, I just feel like this is like too like on the nose, like it's, you know, that is like someone's icon on a social media app. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. And it's so like in your face. I I really like the US cover and I wish I had that okay. one. <laughs> but I am glad I picked it up. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I really like Lauren Euler's writing, um, mm. like as a journalist and critic anyway. So I wasn't that surprised that I would really like her writing like as fiction as well. So that's what I'm reading just now. And then we did a book swap, didn't we? Yes, we did. So what did you I get? Am, I'm very excited. So this book has been on my to read list for quite a while. Mona, I'm pretty sure you spoke about this on your YouTube um, mm. in the video or the Briefly, one I just said I picked yeah. it up and I love, see that's okay, a This cover. is a cover yeah. that we both agree on and think it's absolutely stunning. Um, but this has been on my list for a wee while and I'm really excited to read it. And then also hearing your thoughts on it has just solidified that I know it's going to be like a favourite of mine. Yeah, like so. I don't want to spoil anything no, for don't, you. No spoilers. Are you. <laughs> but if you like kind of like an academic literary novel and you like a moody, broody protagonist, which is definitely Our my writer. jam, your yeah. jam, um, then I would say pick up Mona. Although I would say content warning for like body stuff, definitely. Like if you're sensitive to that, then I would be a bit worried about picking it up. Um, or just to go and into also like being sensitive to yourself. Yeah, and uh, sexual assault as well. Quite a heavy content warning for that, but. Um, I thought it was really well written, it was very dark, and at the end, you're just, the ending is not what I expected, but I just let it take me where it went. Okay. Like, I was like fully like, yes, here we go. And I'm on this journey. I, I was on the journey and I was committed. <laughs> Beth has given me Weird Fucks, again, a really good cover. Stunning. We love a good cover. By Lynn Tillman. This has been on my list for a little while as well. A little slim baby so yeah i just read her on the train through glasgow like it was a really quick read but it feels like you're going through like quite a lot of 
peaks and troughs, a proper journey. So, so I've read, I've read the synopsis about it. Yeah. I don't really know about it because it's on my list, but tell me this. <laughs> why, why am I going to want to read this? I mean, I already know, but <laughs> it was written quite a few decades ago, but mm -hmm. I feel like living in the world that we live in as a young woman, you... Young. Young, we're 30. <laughs> um, but drawing on like past sexual experiences, like you can definitely draw similarities, even though there's been that huge, not huge, but there's been that gap in time that some attitudes and experiences don't ever really change. Um, so it's like older but still relevant. Yeah, and it's just this woman's like sexual encounters with these men and I feel like you'll be able to identify yourself and I feel like any woman who's having sex with men would be able to identify with the main character in any one of these scenarios, you know? Yeah. So from what I gather is that each kind of like chapter or section is like a different encounter. Yeah, there are some crossover with like characters, but yeah. Nice. And she's like traveling around Europe and in America. Oh, so. okay. I like a kind of like travel yeah. narrative. Mm -hmm. So a journey. We're on, a, we're on a journey. I like a journey. What have you read recently and really loved? Um, this year. Yeah, okay. So this far. year so far. What have you loved? Um, I really loved Asylum Road. Yeah, it's so good. That was an incredible book. I love the story, the progress, the journey, but also there was just some really beautiful lines in there. Yeah. Um, and you really got inside the main character's head. That it's, was a great read. It's definitely a book for if you like like good sentences, good mm -hmm. writing. Yeah. Asylum Road is a really good one for that. And also a moody broody female protagonist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also read a really lovely short story collection by Kirsty Logan um, called A Portable Shelter. I haven't read that. And it's really interesting. It's kind of like a little compilation of folk stories, I guess. Mm. Um, and it's about a queer couple who are having a baby. They've made a promise to not lie to the baby, to tell the baby stories. Um, but during the pregnancy, they both kind of go back on this lie behind each other's back in a way because they want to instill some like history and truth and values and like kind of moral stories. Um, so they each tell the baby as it's in its mother's belly, these folk stories. And it's just, okay. it's really, really good. I, I love, love a good folk story. Yeah, I love Ker Kirsty Logan's writing. It's great. She always has this kind of folk, otherworldly element. Yeah, to her work. I think it was last year that I read a collection of short stories by her called Things We Say in the Dark. Yeah. I loved that. It was, yeah. it was so good. It was very, well, it was definitely had like dark undertones. Yeah. Um, but also kind of had that folklore kind of vibe, which I really, really like. Yeah. What about you? What have been some of your highlights um, from this year? From this year? I think I've read like quite a few things that I've enjoyed already this year. Blueberries has definitely been my favourite so far. A collection of essays about what it means to be a woman, a writer, an artist, someone who travels in the world, what does home mean? Yes, Elena Savage covered so much in that collection and used so many different forms. just felt like there were so many things to be found within that collection and I really loved it. Fiction-wise, this year, what have I loved? Actually, let me just check my Goodreads because <laughs> I have a bit of a mind blank. This year, what have I read? Mona's definitely up there. So I would say, I, like, I really loved Mona. That was like, maybe like a solid four, Stars. Okay. Maybe four point two five. I really like. I really liked it. And then also Motherhood by Sheila Hetty, which I wouldn't say is like straightforward fiction. It's maybe like auto fiction. But that book was. Oh my god! It was so good. It's like an important voice that needed to be heard in a conversation about motherhood and having children and. I would 
definitely recommend it to probably like literally anybody like everybody seems to have their opinion on who should be a mother and why and should we be having children yeah. and i feel like reading that book um really opens up a perspective that like it's hard to ignore when you hear it so like honestly and authentically and maybe because it is a woman in her 30s questioning what she wants to do about her future and if she wants to have a family and things as an artist and a creator as well as a woman it really struck a chord with you yeah it resonated <laughs> deeply i just feel like it, it's just a really honest book it doesn't shy away from things that maybe as women we're not supposed to say like i don't want children <laughs> i know this book really moved you because throughout the time, like the period that you were reading it, every single time that we were on the phone, you would mention it at least once. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, okay, this one really got under her skin. <laughs> I feel like I'm definitely like that. If I like something, it kind of ends up permeating every conversation and interaction I have with anybody. I liked it though, because I feel like it really pinpointed a line of thought on your periphery like you wanted to kind of like engage with it and this was a good way for you to engage with it well i think it's natural when you get to this age as well yeah the people around you are like starting families and people start to ask you when are you starting a family and yeah you know all these my favorite questions like personal choice questions get kind of thrown at you and there's expectations put on you and so like reading that book was i don't know it's like reading a conversation with myself at some points <laughs> it was so relatable and then i watched a really good youtube video that was sheila hetty in conversation with her mother about the oh, book okay it was, it was really sweet um it was really short it was maybe like 15 minutes or something like that but i'll link that down below so you can watch it as well and i'll send it to you because yes, i think you'd like to watch that mm -hmm. as well as read the book mm -hmm. let's see mm -hmm. What about any disappointments this year so far? I know we're only like, come, like it's the end of February, but um, has there been anything that you've been disappointed in so far? Kind of. I mean, I'm reading Toni Morrison's Beloved at the moment, mm -hmm. and I've read some Toni Morrison before, and I absolutely adore her writing, and I think it's very special, and. I've heard so many good and moving things about Beloved that, I don't know, maybe I just built up in my head. Yeah. Um, not that I'm not enjoying it, it's just maybe I've set the expectations too high. Set the expectation too high, yes. And also it's kind of, it's, it's not a contemporary piece, you know? No. So I feel like these kind of books maybe take a bit more brain power, concentration, like concerted effort to get through. So I'm kind of making my way slowly through that whilst dipping into other things. But I'm enjoying it. I'm just kind of more frustrated with myself that I'm not getting through it as quickly as I would like. Okay. Yeah. What about you? What disappointments? Um, I didn't really vibe with Severance by Ling Ma. But then, like, did I expect to? maybe not it was not really my kind of book there was parts of it like towards the end i was like oh like this is definitely more the kind of thing that i like to read but do you know i actually think you'd probably really like that book though <laughs> why because i feel like you love a kind of dystopian theme yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you would really like it and then also <laughs> no one is talking about this well i don't know if it like disappointed me or if it just wasn't for me you know yeah i read that one last year and i remember thinking i loved the experimental form yeah and i loved what the author had set out to do yeah i just i'm not sure that all of the content was for me so whilst i didn't necessarily like love it i still appreciate it i think that's the sure. same for me and like you did say that when you gave it to me to read yeah. that i think we both love the concept but the execution wasn't really to our like normal reading style maybe yeah experimental mm. form great tackling the human condition through 
looking at communication mm -hmm. and things. Great, we love it. But so sometimes I don't like when things are like really reference heavy or really like all the time. And yeah. sometimes that can put me off a bit. But I mean, I say that and I'm reading fake accounts so I'm really enjoying it so far. And it's like Twitter <laughs> this, Twitter that. But for some reason for me that it works better in this and doesn't mm. pull me out of it so much. So far, I'm like maybe just more than halfway through, but I'm still still enjoying it. But I'm a Lauren Euler fan girl, so it might just be that as well. <laughs> I mean I think that might be a little bit of it. Yeah. So have you enjoyed your little trip through to Glasgow? Yes. I have. It's been really nice to come through for just a, a few days and um, usually I'm through for one or two days but this yeah. is maybe like three or four and it just is so much nicer, it's so much chilled. I feel like we're not rushing to like tick boxes and get yeah. stuff done. <laughs> but yeah, so far what have we enjoyed? Highlight of the trip. Um, like big feet, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nothing else is gonna no, come close. Seeing my face, right? <laughs> No, Big Thief was Adrian's so good. Face. Yeah, Adrian's face, yeah. <laughs> Big Thief was amazing. So Big Thief are our favourite band and we've seen them four times. I think we've seen them every time they've come to Scotland. Yeah, so they were also the last gig that we went to before lockdown happened, which was incredible. Yeah. Because it was at the beginning of March 2020. Yeah. And it was at like my favourite venue here in Glasgow as well, at the Old Fruit Market. Yeah, it was, and it was lovely. It just felt really special anyway. Like mm -hmm. little did we know. So getting back to see them, especially with like them having released a new record and everything, it was so good. What was your favourite song that they played? Oh god. Um, <laughs> You can, I don't know. Or, or do like a top three. Oh, it's hard. Like, everyone lost their mind when they played Masterpiece. Yeah. And I, I love that song so mm -hmm. much. And it's so, like, loud. Yeah. Do you know what? I always like the loud ones. Yeah. <laughs> Probably Masterpiece. And then Not. I feel like Not is really special when they play it here because yeah. they wrote it when they were in Scotland. Okay, this has actually just become a big thief fan YouTube yeah. account. Yeah. They play Contact in their encore and that was very, very, very good. And I thought it was sweet because they tried to play it a couple of times and yeah. she said it just wasn't feeling and sounding right and everyone was like, come on, Adrian. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, their drummer was like, look, if you can't play it good, just play it bad. And so they played it terrible for us and it was... It was perfection. Yeah, I mean, perfect. Okay, my cattails. <laughs> yes, <laughs> cattails. Um, not in masterpiece. Yeah, like they're all just so special in songs that I listen to on the daily. I just also love being in a Scottish crowd. Oh, Scottish crowds like, are the best. So special. Yeah. They always want one more tune and <laughs> oh, one more tune. Yeah, they're like the warmest crowds you can be in. There's yeah. always so much like love, like, love for mm -hmm. whoever's playing. Appreciation, but. I I mean, it was like felt really special for me because, as we said, that they were the last show that I saw before lockdown, and this was the first show mm. that I saw since. And it kind of felt nice that that like really weird, horrible period of time it was bookended. Was like bookended yeah. by Big Thief. <laughs> yeah. I got to say, I was moved to tears during the show. Yeah, Just kind of in it. It was great. <laughs> yeah, if you like Big Thief, let's be friends, okay? Yeah, please. <laughs> please be our yeah. friend. Um. Yeah, I don't think I have anything more book related to say today. Um, um, this moment in time. <laughs> at this moment in time. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm so glad you got to meet my sister. She's my favorite person on this planet. <laughs> and I will see you next time.